Mexican national team, Ecuador combined 11. In today's video, we are recording in the motherland, not my motherland, but in Martin's motherland of Quito, Ecuador. So very excited about this one. I feel like, unfortunately, we're going to have a lot of uh, agreement in, in favor of Ecuador in this video. But you guys in the comments, drop your combined 11 for these two national teams. And also smash that subscribe button and make sure you check out Martin and Ecuador Heroes. I'll put his links in the description of this video. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, man. So these, these are the ground rules. All right, we're going 4-3-3. Three, three. I don't want to see any 5 three, twos in the comments or anything. No nonsense. 4-2-4. Four, four. We're not doing that. We're going 4-3-3. Three, three. We're going to start at the goalkeeper position. Marty, why don't, why don't you take goalkeeper first since you're the guest, even though I'm technically in your home right now and I could also be considered a guest. I'll let you go first. Okay. So. Goalkeeper, Ecuador, Mexico. I think for sure, Alexander Dominguez. He's a mm. 34-year-old goalkeeper from Liga de Quito. He just finished winning the Copa Sudamericana 2023 back in end of September. And then he won the league title with Ecuador in, in December, being the best player. He was actually the best player for the Ecuador Liga Pro, the league's best player, goalkeeper. And he's been playing for Ecuador, doing pretty good. So I'm going to say I'm gonna say Dominguez had the edge over, who'd you say, Memo Ochoa? No, I didn't, actually. This one was very, very difficult for me. I'm not shocked at all that you went with Dominguez. Uh, I knew that your bias would be too strong to ever nominate Memo Ochoa for this. But I think in terms of like performance, both of these keepers are kind of older. Memo Ochoa, it's so clearly like his best days are behind him and probably with Dominguez as well. I don't, it's so difficult to rate Memo because on one hand, he has like these legendary moments with the national team, like Brazil World Cup, you know, even saving like penalties against Poland in the most recent World Cup. Yeah. Um, but it's so difficult to assess how good this man really is because he's been on terrible club teams his entire career, literally the entire time. So he's never been on in a situation that Dominguez has been in where he plays for like a Quito. I guess you could say maybe when he was with America, but he's always been in front or behind, I should say, a trash back line. And so he's always getting shots. like he's taking shots like he's at the club, dude, like us at the club last night. Uh, that's pretty much been Memo Ochoa, but for 15 years, bro. So I kind of had like a draw here. I don't know if that's cheating, like leaning Dominguez. If we're going like national team highlights, I'm taking Memo all day, any day. But if we're taking like just purely club form, you might have to go Dominguez. So honestly, chat, I need you all in the comments because this one, this one was tough. It's a good one. It's a good comparison. It, it, yeah, because they're both like arguably the best goalkeeper in their respective national team histories. Like you would say Dominguez yeah. was the best. He's definitely the best goalkeeper of all time for Ecuador. Okay. Said the best career. Uh, he never played in Europe, but had successful spells in Mexico, Argentina, Uruguay, mm -hmm. and a club legend at, at Liga. See these five stars right here? He's won four of them. Can y'all see that right here? He's at the club from a teenager, went to play out abroad, and came back just two years ago and won the fifth star. So, legend. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, he's good. And, and you could say, it, for my... In my opinion, Memo Cho is the best goalkeeper in Mexican history. I would say so. So, damn, dude, it's close. It's close. Chat, y'all gonna gonna have to let us know. What position is not close at all is left back. And, I mean, it's a stupid yawn, bro. Let's not even play games here. Yeah. Like, Fair to be. Ex-Liga player. Yes. Like, it's not even it's not even debatable. Really, the, the topic around a stupid yawn is, like, is he – top three in the world not is he better than Arteaga or Jesus Gallardo you know like he's just in a different stratosphere we we don't have a fullback like Estupiñan we haven't for a minute now so it's clean sweep yeah I, I would say so not to be disrespectful or anything I just think no Stupinan you can be disrespectful is, if you want he's one of our better players on the national team and he's he's got that left back locked and one of the best in South America for sure and at Copa America for sure for sure. No, I think in my combined South American 11, I'm talking South America, not Mexico, Ecuador, I would put Estupiñan in my left back. And if I'm putting Estupiñan in that list, you're damn right he's in the combined Ecuador, Mexico 11. Let's go to the CBs now. This one is going to be interesting. You go first on this one. I could see the shouts for a Mexican center back, but I'm taking <laughs> William Pacho and Piero Incapié all day. They're just they're lighting it up in Europe. 
Incapié is about to win a Bundesliga title. He's in the final of the uh, the cup, and he's fighting to win a Europa League. So this man's going crazy. And William Pacho, he was at Antwerp. He learned from Alderweireld last season, and he's just killing it at Frankfurt. He's one of the U23s with the most minutes in Bundesliga. So yeah, he just – and they're both young. I'll take both of them. I'm taking both of them as well. Oof. I'm Oof. taking Incampié. I mean, Incampié hands down. Hands down is in there. Um, there was a little doubt in my head when I was comparing Johan Vasquez and William Pacho. Hmm. And I think it's actually pretty close. I will say that. I think Pacho is a better pure defender. I think Johan Vasquez is better on the ball. And hmm. I think the stats support that what i was surprised with william pacho and i almost had to drop him for this is did you know let me pull that i got stats for y'all uh -oh. did you know he's in the 34th percentile of all center backs in aerial duels one that's abysmal in the world or europe or what? I, I think it's the world dude 34th percentile that's that's trash for for comparison cesar montes another mexican center back is the 96th percentile can you guess the ecuadorian center back who has the highest percentile of aerial duels one. Is it Felix Torres? It is Felix Torres in the 95th percentile. So him and Cesar are like air gods, bro. It's like the United States Air Force. And then Pacho is like I would say I don't I don't I don't know. He's trying to use a bow and arrow to, to take down a jet. It's he's definitely a tall center back. So yeah. why is he trash in the air? He he just explodes. why is La Pantera so much better? To be honest, when he came out from Independiente del Valle, from the Ecuador youth ranks, he wasn't tipped to be one of the best players, best center backs, starting center backs, let alone for Ecuador. I feel like his his move to Antwerp with Toby Alderweireld, Tottenham. My uh, boy, dude. Tottenham fan. Leave a uh, like in the video for other girl, bro. <laughs> he learned a lot from him. So he... Not really, how to jump. Didn't learn how to jump. From in him. the past year, has, has exploded. But I think his strengths are definitely ball playing, positioning. He could play a two in the back, a three in the back. But yeah, I didn't know he was that bad. Was, I mean, everything's exploded, but his vertical leap, evidently. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I think it depends on how you want to craft your team. I, I guarantee you now there will be many, many Mexicans in the comment section saying it's Incampié and Vasquez. And I don't necessarily disagree I, I think if you just want to like lock it down like i said preserve a lead you're probably going to go with william bacho if you want a team with the center backs push up high you're going to want johan vasquez and pierre Campier. i actually expanded this because i'm a psychopath and i actually listed the top eight center backs for both of these teams i'm going to tell you my order right here number one in Campier. two william bacho three i got johan vasquez four Felix. Felix Torres. Felix. Felix Torres. Five, Cesar Montes. Six. Arboleda. No, Ordonez. Joel Ordo Ordonez. Yes. I got Arboleda seventh. Okay. And eighth, I have Peter Guzman from Mexico, from Rayados. So that was my top eight. And the reason I, I did this is because I realized I would take Felix Torres over Cesar Montes. Yeah, Felix Torres is he's good. He, he's a beast. He he lit it up at Santos in Mexico, and now he's playing at Corinthians, starting mm -hmm. every game. He's good, and he and he's one of our top goal scorers in the national team. He's this cycle probably one of the most dangerous center backs in world football from set pieces. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how many goals he has for the national team or for his club football, but I guarantee you, he's in the ninety fifth percentile for goals, duels won, all of that stuff. Like. Yeah. The man is a beast, and I know there will be people disrespecting Felix because he plays in Brazil, even though he's playing for one of the better clubs in the Americas. People will, people will say, well, Montes is at Almeria. It's like, yeah, and they're trash, dude. Not that that's Montes' fault, but Felix Torres, dude, When I've been so impressed with him every single time I watch that selection. Yeah. Like, he's just he's just a beast. One of your friends, was it you or was it Seb? Shout out to Seb, who was saying that he doesn't want to see uh, Felix Torres in the national team anymore. He said that? S somebody said that, and I was, like, my blood started boiling. It's because maybe we don't want to see the three in the back system. Mm. And without three in the back, we would drop Felix over Pacho and Incapié. Okay. But now, Fe Felix, I remember one game we were tied to Paraguay the whole time, uh, the whole game. Then in 88, 89, he just scores a ripper header uh, from across from Mr. Pignan. And, and has scored, like, three goals the past six months. He's yeah. insane. 
He's he's unguardable. He's like Blake Griffin, but in I can see why he's in the ninety fifth percentile. Right? Yeah. The question is, who's better, him or Pantera? We'll have to debate that in the uh... Pantera. <laughs> no, for my Haiti fans, Ricardo Abe. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody center back. Yo, he. I'm telling y'all, watching that man live, it was a spectacle. I mean, that dude is an athlete. You had well, to dude, buy the shirt. I, I literally had to buy the shirt because of that in that golazo from that one dude mm-hmm. in the midfield. And crack. But anyways, we'll do Ecuador, Haiti combined 11 next video. Let's go on to right back. And first, I just want to say uh, RIP Byron Castillo. Um, he's not dead, but his national team career might be. Is that fair to say? I think that's completely fair to say. Yeah. Okay. Tragedy. Absolute tragedy. I went with Preciado here. Over cooling that alcohol. Yeah, I, I also go with Angelo Preciado. I mean, this man is just a beast. Yeah. Uh, great at crossing, great at attacking individual 1v1s. Yeah. I'll take him all day. Yeah. I would say offensively, it's not even a contest at Ajo versus Preciado. I'll just reach out his stats. I know he's been playing mostly as a midfielder, but he's got three goals, five assists in 19 games. I mean, that's, that's pretty crazy, including five goals and assists in the Europa League. He, mm. he may not be defensively very good. I would actually give Araujo the edge defensively. But the reason that I'm also going Preciado is when we look at national team performance, Araujo's never, ever looked good for Mexico. And there's always the excuse that he hasn't gotten a run of games. I totally understand. But the facts are the facts. He hasn't played well for Mexico. And Preciado, he's had some stinkers. For, like, I remember Senegal and World Cup. Not a very good game from Preciado. I mean, the whole team sucked, to be fair. It wasn't just him. But I think we've seen strong performances in European competition, in domestic league, and for international with Angelo Preciado. He's also my boy, and I don't think we've seen anything outside of, like, encouraging performances um, with Las Palmas for Araujo. I think Araujo might have a higher ceiling, Mm. but Preciado right now, I mean, speed demon too, dude. How old is Araujo? He might be 21, 22. Oh, he's young. Okay. How old is Preciado? 25? He just, he just turned 26 or 27. Okay, he in his prime, though. Yeah. Okay. In his prime. Yeah, so I'm taking prime Preciado over still pretty raw Julian Araujo. That's fair. That's fair. All right. Let's go to – let's just do the center mids together because it is Edson and Caicedo. Definitely. Like, without a – Definitely. Yeah. Who would you put at the eight and who would you put at the six? Uh, I would put at the six Alvarez. Being, okay. I think he, had, he did great at Ajax. He's playing more box to box at West Ham, but Moises Caicedo, I think if you give him the the, the space, the creativity, he mm-hmm. can score goals for you, assist, uh, defend as well. I just love to see Moises Caicedo as a box to box. So neat. Yeah, I agree. I was looking at the stats, you know, to kind of like have a mini topic: who's better, Edson and Moises? And in terms of like passing, they're pretty even, but Moises has a substantially better long ball. Yeah. Edson's is actually pretty poor, mm-hmm. which is kind of funny when I looked at it because he always tries a long ball. So, like, in the eye test, I'm like, oh, he's he's a sniper. But then when you look at the actual numbers, you're like, well, he tries it a lot. It just doesn't, Not it doesn't work yeah. that often. Um, but Edson is statistically s- substantially a better progressor of the ball and dribbler than Moises, which I found interesting, at least this season at West Ham versus Moises this season at Chelsea. Um but I agree if I had to put one as an eight and if I had to pick one to be a little more offensive, I probably would want Moises. And I would just tell Edson, just like mop things up. Yeah, definitely Moises would, would help him out. But Moises, when he plays for Ecuador, he, he plays as an eight. Yeah. He attacks. He, he basically the one who sets up the chances. So that's why at Chelsea, we weren't seeing that because of the Enzo and everything. But yeah, that'd be good. I think Moises Caicedo in Ecuador needs – a partner with the level that Alvarez has. We, for sure start. We were talking yesterday. That midfield would be disgusting. Yeah. Like pure filth. Let's go to the cam spot. Who do you have here? Kendrick Baez. I got Luis Chavez. It's a good show. Why you got Kendrick Baez? Is it because he follows you on Ecuador Heroes? No, he doesn't follow me. Oh, yeah. damn. Yeah. But... Come on, Kendrick. What the hell, man? No, uh, people are going to say uh, he's a youngster, 16 years old still. Um, that's what a lot of people in Ecuador were saying. He got his call up uh, about seven, six months ago to the Ecuador national team against Uruguay. Yes, Biel says Uruguay. 
and had man of the match performance. He went crazy uh, dribbling people 1v1. And then since then, he's just been starting for us ever since. I think he's a great player. Yes, he plays the Ecuador League, but it's because he has to turn 18 to officially go to Chelsea. Chelsea is bottom. He's a Chelsea player. Um, I think he's number 10 for sure. He could also play like a messy right wing because he's, he's a good lefty, but I'll put him at, at 10. I was thinking that. I was thinking you could make the argument to put Kendry Pies as a winger. Yeah, and then I thought about it and I said, hell no, he ain't making my 11. I think with Kendry no. Pies, there's way, it's too much potential. I'm, I'm sure he had a great game against Uruguay. I actually watched the game. He was very good. But as of time of recording, I have to go with Luis Chavez because I think Luis Chavez, it's, it's almost an unfair comparison. Luis Chavez is 28 years old. Yeah. Luis Chavez is, has won the Apertura with, with Pachuca, you know, being arguably their best player that season. He's had big moments for the national team because he's had more opportunity. He's got, I think, four goals in 15 games for Moscow this season. Very good stats, very consistent stats for Pachuca. Um, I need a little more marination with Kendry Pies, especially with all the stuff that you've been telling me is going on in the background, before I put him as my cam. I think it's Kind of like Preciado versus Araujo, except times five, where obviously ceiling Kendry Pies is, yeah. I mean, a different planet. I mean, Luis Chavez is in his prime. He's 28 years old. He's not getting any better than what he is right now. But Kendry Pies, I mean, yeah, he's, I mean, he, he does play for Independiente, you know, my boys. But uh, I had to put that aside, and I'm going to go with Luis Chavez. I'm going to go with Luis Chavez here. Also, Preciado's ability, I think. The only person in this combined 11 who is potentially more dangerous from set pieces would be a Stupignan. And I would take Luis Chavez over Stupignan. If I have a free kick with my my family's life on the line, I would take Luis Chavez over Stupignan. No, I respect it. I respect it for sure. 28 compared to 16. But I think 16-year-old Kenny Pye, well, he turned 17 in May, so shortly. But I think right now he's he's a great player and so it'd be not starting to love him. Yeah, he is a good player. Just nowhere near my left. Nowhere near. Let's go to left wing. All right, you you taking this one first too, because I gotta know <laughs> what cheese, what bang average Ecuadorian player you put at left wing. Who you got? I'm picking Jeremy Sarmiento. Okay. Fantastic yeah. player. Dropped. He was the best player for Ecuador against Italy, where we played uh, recently in the, in the friendly in, in New York. It wasn't that hard to be the best player, but okay. Against Italy? Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking c- compared oh, to the rest Ecuador. of your team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Jeremy, He he's a, a natural cam, but he plays on the wing. He, he's something that you don't see typically in, in Comebol or Concaca football, soccer. Um, he grew up his whole life in Europe, came from the England youth ranks. He's a baller. He had he was injured last season. That's why he wasn't showing up. But and Brighton loaned him out. But he's about to get promoted with Ipswich. Ipswich right? Yeah, uh, doing fantastic. He just scored a game winner like seven days ago for him. Great player. I want to see him start. I like Sarmiento. I think he's still very raw. And I wonder if you would be putting him in this eleven if he wasn't so attractive. All right, that's crazy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think you only put this him in here because he's face, bro. This man, Jack. I mean, look, I'm gotta, just, <laughs> I'm just asking the questions I know the audience is thinking right now. If That's he crazy. was an uglier person, I don't think you'd have him in here. And wait, sorry, what wing are we going right now? We're we going right I'm, or left. We said left. So okay, yeah, left I'm, I'm taking, segment. I'm taking Chino Puerta. Um, nine goals, eight assists in Liga Mekis this season for a pretty average Puma side. Um, in terms of progressive passing, in terms of shot creating actions. He is an extremely effective winger who also is a press god. In if we're talking intangibles, you call uh, Sarmiento a baller. Well, Chino Huerta is a dog, bro. That man is a dog. He is completely fearless. I like Sarmiento, but I would probably want if I could recreate my team, I'd probably put Sarmiento more central, like you said. Yeah. I wouldn't put him wide. If I'm talking just winger for winger, band for band out there, I would go Chino Huerta. Okay. And if Chino Huerta, like, he's one of those players, yeah, he's at Liga Mekis, and I know people be like, well, Sarmiento's in Europe. Um, I, I feel like the championship is about his level right now, and I do think that Chino Huerta could easily play in Europe. Easily. I mean, he's just going to cost 15 mil. That's why he hasn't gone yet. I think the championship could be the, the sixth best league in, in Europe. I don't know if 
what you think, what what your audience thinks, but championship is a very good, very good tournament. Yeah. Oh, I'm not I'm not suggesting it's like the Bulgarian second division or anything yeah. like that, but um I do think Chino Huerta could play in the championship. Yeah. And I do think he could play, you know, in Belgium, Denmark, Netherlands, anything like that. So this is the thing with Jeremy, I put him as uh, left wing because he that that's where he plays in, in Ipswich and Ecuador. He is just the type of winger to cut in a lot. Mm-hmm. So I can see the shot while you put him out, out of the 10. Mm-hmm. I like I like Sarmiento. I haven't seen him as much in club football. Like my experience watching Sarmiento is exclusively Ecuador. Okay. And I mean, maybe a few games uh, in the Prem, but I just, I don't know. I feel like I have similar frustrations with Sarmiento that I have with another player who will be making an appearance later in this best 11, where I just feel like his decision-making is also not that great. I think he's got sauce for sure, but I think Chino Huerta's got sauce as well. Okay. So yeah, I'm taking, I'm taking Chino. That's a good one. Want to go striker? I'm, this is the last one, striker? No, we got striker in the right wing. Oh, yeah. Striker. Santiago Jimenez. Enner Valencia. Stop it, dude. Stop it right now. Okay. Santi's doing great in in Netherlands and Europe. Uh-huh. But Enner Valencia is just a veteran goat for Ecuador. He, he's a captain. He scores. He's a top goal, goal scorer for us in World Cups. He, okay. He's scoring a lot for Internacional. Got to a semi How many goals is that? Three at the World Cup to be all-time Ecuador? Top goal scorer. Uh, he got he got four in the World Cup mm. and scored in 2014 as well. We didn't go to 2018. Okay, so okay, four yeah. goals. I think something could have hit that if he actually uh, got called up. You didn't get called up? No, he wasn't in the World Cup squad, dude. No, oh, oh, we'll talk about the disaster that is the Mexican Federation after recording. No, oh, it's insane. It's insane. I mean, imagine not calling up Moises Caicedo. But it's okay, like continue. Year, it's like a year and four months ago, five months ago. That's crazy. Yep. Oh, yeah. Still haven't forgot. So it sounds like you're going with Inter Valencia because he's more decorated. But if I'm picking a player now, I would never pick Valencia over Santi. I think when we he went to the World Cup, he was top goal scorer for Fenerbahce and one of the top goal scorers in Europe. Uh, Internacional got his million-dollar move to, to go there, and he got to a semifinal Libertadores. I just think Inter Valencia, when it's – Crunch time, he delivers, and he's a good player. He, he's not just the, the Haaland, number nine, waits for the ball. He's a combination play. plays usually with the tens, with the wingers. He's fast, mm-hmm. takes free kicks. I like I like Valencia. I think, no doubt, Ener is a more clutch player. But I would look at it like this. If Mexico had Ener Valencia instead of Santi, I honestly don't think we're any better. If you guys had Santi... I think you guys would be pretty damn scary. Well, yeah, we would play with Santi and Ender. Like, Ender would play up. Not Rodriguez? Up. You're right. Uh, Rodriguez, he's doing really good. He's just been injured a couple, yeah. a couple of months now, but he's good. He's good as well. Mm. You guys let us know. I'm taking Santi. I, and maybe this is disrespectful. I don't think it's super close. I don't think it's super close right now. Let's go to right wing <laughs> to, to wrap up the video. We're starting a definitely a war right, can, uh, in the comments. Me. This one was difficult for me. It was difficult for me. I did go Chucky Lozano, um, mainly because I don't know who the hell I would choose from Ecuador. I'm not picking Gonzalo Plata over Chucky Lozano. Candy, candy pies. I thought about that, but nah, bro. You have to do more than five goals in in the Ecuadorian league before I put you over Chucky. I'm sorry. No, I, I said Chucky Lozano as well. He's just he's proven in Europe. One of Mexico's best players right now. For sure. I would take him. I would fit Kendry in the 10, but uh, Kendry's a good shot. But, nah, I think Chuki would throw some out of the water right now. Right yeah, now. yeah. I think if Chuki could finish, he would be such a good player. But his shooting really, really lets him down. But I think he's, like, off the ball, um, his movement and, and all those other statistical categories, he's, he's underrated. Yeah. Very fast. Very fast. Um, at least in Eredivisie, his shot creation is pretty good. Same with his take-ons, everything like that. I think he's got five goals, three assists, and 18 or something. So the stats are pretty good. Um, I think he is an Eredivisie starter-level player. I think Serie A was probably a bit too much for him. But I don't really see a good competitor from Ecuador. And I, w- I would say the wingers are your 
your weakest position, would you agree with that? Um, or would you go with like I would say our eight. striker, our striker, or not eight because we put Moises there. Because if we, for example, the World Cup, Ener Valencia didn't play as a striker; he played as a left wing, and then we had Estrada striker. So I think with a good number nine, we would be we'd be okay. I think every position is okay. Um, Wingers probably because defense, goalkeepers, midfielders were still. Yeah, I think defense. someone God. next to Moises in the midfield, we need a, a real start to trying people out, but there's not like a guaranteed guy next to Moises. So, yeah. Kind of sounds like you guys need Santi Jimenez. Yep. Santi Jimenez or yeah. Alvarez? Santi Jimenez. You said you need a striker. Oh, no, yeah. I, would I take, know just the guy. I would take Santi. Right now. Yeah, I would take Santi and I would take Alvarez for sure. I think they would start back and forth. I think they would definitely start. Yeah, have Ender at, at the left, Jeremy at the right. That back yeah. line, I mean, that's going to be tough to break into for any Mexican. Not just any Mexican. I mean, it's tough for, like, a Brazilian to break, break into that back line. Uruguayan. I've been, I've been preaching that I think Ecuador has the second best defense behind Argentina in the Americas. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I agree. And then, for example, the left back, I think, is is better than Argentina's left back. Acuna? Yeah, yeah. I would say so. So Acuna's a dog, but yeah, yes, it, but it's Molina's speaking, good too. Molina, Molina's, right Molina's better than Preciado. Yeah, for sure. Say so. For sure, more complete player, much less of a liability, and very strong in the air. And then, gosh, man, when you're talking Kuti versus Capier and Pacho versus Otamendi, I mean, you really can't go wrong. <laughs> like that's, a, I mean, damn, dude. Where he's probably the best in South America. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would say so. I mean, I'm a Spurs fan. I'm biased, but uh, yeah, is. I do love Kuti. I mean, even when you get to the second tier, Arboleda and Felix Torres versus Marcos Senesi and probably Nejuen Perez or um, freaking, oh God, what's his name? Juan Foyth. I know he's uh, kind of like a fullback. Those are still really yeah, good yeah. players. And we're talking like the fourth CB on the depth chart. I mean, even Marcos Rojo is not bad. And he's probably like seventh for Argentina or Arboleda for, for you guys. Like, yeah. Yep, stacked. We just we being Mexico, we just don't have the depth like that. Like not even close in those yeah. areas of the pitch. I wish we had more attack because we're we're stacked on defense, stacked. which is a good thing. But yeah, you know, that's why you guys are about to be set piece merchants at the Copa America. It's hard to score. It's hard to score right now. We we didn't get a goal against Italy, and we scored two against Guatemala. So you should have won that. Like, Six zero, I feel like. I don't know. You know why you didn't? Is because you guys are wearing those horrendous blue jerseys. The blue ones? Was the that like navy blue? Was that not the Guatemala game? Honestly, I think I forgot. But yeah. They're terrible. Because you were white against Italy. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been the blue. One. Terrible, man. I think it's the wor- <laughs> It might be the worst kit heading into the Copa America. It's funny because we had a blue one in the World Cup and it was beautiful. Fire. 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 You guys arguably had the best kits. At the World Cup, like just like as a collection, yeah. I would say. Yeah. 